I'll try to keep this video as short as possible because I really hate the stupid ass trend of video essays on YouTube. Good lord, there's a lot to cover. I initially was not planning on going to the Pantera show in Austin, like, at all, but Grady Champion, uh, Dimebag's old guitar tech, for those who don't know. Hey. That's the dragon! Yeah. <laughs> reached out to me and asked me if I was going to his show. Long story short, he was like, um, come watch the show and come hang with us backstage. And I was like, um, yes please. So the day of the show rolls around. And to be honest, this is my first time ever going to a show where I had like tickets at will call or anything like that. So I had no idea how any of that stuff worked. And I like stood in the wrong line for a while and waited in like the hot sun. And it took me a minute to get my ticket, but I finally got my ticket. And I started to make my way towards the stage to meet Grady. I didn't have the right passes, and so security was like up my ass when I was trying to go and meet Grady. And Grady had to like come off the stage and go into the actual venue to like grab me to bring me with him on stage. So, anyways, Grady shows me the entire side stage area and mostly just like the guitar tech area. Right off the bat, I noticed that MXR flanger doubler and that uh, Rocktron Hush guitar silencer, and those were the same ones that he used for Dime. The flanger doubler actually came from Dime's home studio, apparently, and it was one that had like Dime's handwriting on it, and still had like markings for where all the knobs went and everything, and it was crazy. And same goes for the Rocktron guitar silencer. Like, that was all stuff that he used for Dime. He brought that out for Zach, and that was set up in like a big rack unit above all of Zach's normal gear. I could really do like a whole video on this topic, but Grady just does not get enough appreciation for what he's doing on this Pantera tour. He was like super duper sweet to me when he had time to give me the tour and chatting with me and everything. But by the time Lamb of God came on, he was like, all business like he just went into full business mode and was focused on getting everything set up for the show and you could just tell that guy was committed to making sure his job was not not in jeopardy <laughs> and this is just from what i could see he was busy as fuck after lama god went on but like who knows what load in and load out is like and I mean, from what I can tell, he's more than just a dude that they brought on. He is like a full-on crew member and arguably a fifth member of the band. His responsibilities during the show really consisted of manning Zach's effects that were not on the board. I didn't happen to get a shot of Zach's pedal board, but it's more or less the same board that he's known for having with Black Label Society. The guitar silencer and the flanger doubler were basically like key to dime sound live. And those were more or less Grady's instrument. I mean, he's constantly on those things the entire show. Every squeal, dive bomb, slide, pinch harmonic. I mean, he is constantly like just cranking that little knob for the mix on the flanger doubler. And it's just, it's insane. I mean, it's it's every little thing that Zach does. He is sitting there listening for all of that. Yeah. Or all the stops on like a new level where it's like, da, da, da. He's sitting there pressing in on the actual fucking guitar silencer to to get in between those little stops. And it doesn't matter how small, he is there ready to catch the zap if he stops on that. And it's just, that was so impressive. Because no matter how good your noise gate is, it's going to cut some of your gain. And nothing beats having a human noise gate to sit there and press the bypass button and engage your noise gate when you actually need it, but then bypass it and give you the full gain of your amp when you don't need it. And Grady is just phenomenal and it was so crazy to watch him work on that. And depending on what's going on, Grady would even change like some of the parameters on the actual flanger doubler itself or switch it from the flanger to the doubler mode or vice versa.
you know, I mean, he would experiment and do all these little things depending on the lead or, or what part of the song or, or if Zach's just shredding. Like, he would he would sit there and he'd change stuff on the fly. And it was just like, I, I never, you know, when I thought of Grady actually manning Dime's rig, I figured it was like, okay, here's a part of the song. He pushes a button and he stands back. And it's like, no, his fucking finger is on the dial and he's manipulating the dial by the second and he's pressing buttons on the guitar silencer to engage and disengage. And now he's got the whammy in the mix. Like the dude has his fucking hands full with this show. It's insane. It was really just incredible. And you could just tell that this is like second nature to him. And probably from just years of doing it with Dime because this is exactly what he was doing with Dime. And that's what I thought was so cool. I was sitting there watching, basically in a time machine, watching him work exactly how he did with Dime for the first time in forever. And then he throw the fucking whammy pedal into the mix. And this is a new thing because Dime always ran his own whammy pedal. It's really remarkable because, I mean, it's like Zach is up there playing his leads and doing whatever and Grady is more or less doing like the solo to like becoming on his own with that fucking pedal while he's standing in front of the effects rack backstage. Well, It's like, this is a pedal that's meant to be used by the actual guitar player, but he's making it work while standing there at the effects rack. And that is just crazy to me. That it makes no sense, but he's able to do this and pull it off. And that just speaks to his talent. If anyone says that he's not the fifth member, fucking fight me, dude. He's totally the fifth member. The Larry is like more or less a boneheaded trick, but the fact that he's able to make it work like he does under that condition, really just goes to show how good of a guitar tech he is. And again, I, I really want to do a video expanding on this because it's really not that documented on what he did with Dime or what he's even doing on this tour. And it's just, it's been so fascinating and eye-opening to watch him do this. And, you know, he was telling me, he was like, you know, you have a seat um, in this, the sound guy offered me a seat at the soundboard and I had, I had seats with my tickets and everything. And he was like, go watch it from your seats and stuff. And I was like, I, th I think I want to watch you. I want to like watch what you do because like this is fascinating to me that you are just on this shit and I was the whole show I was just in like stay the fuck out of the way mode the entire time but I was just like laser focus on what he was doing with that effects rock because it was just so fascinating to me and it was a first hand look that nobody has ever really shown. Um, nobody has ever really documented what he does back there to that degree. And then you have Steve, who's Zach's VLS guitar tech, who's a total sweetheart, by the way. And I only first got introduced to him at the show, but I was like just hanging with him and shooting the shit and chatting with him the whole night, even during the show. And he was just great and he was happy to answer whatever stupid question I had. Um, but, and he's a busy dude too, like he's busy as fuck, like his roles are, he manages all of Zach's hardware, so all of his guitars, like stringing, tuning, uh, physically going out there and handing Zach's guitar to him and taking it from him, um, you know, anything that Zach needs assistance with on stage, I mean, he's out there to do that for him. So a fun fact is that I noticed Zach had this plastic cover on his pedal board during the show. And I was like, what is that about? I've never seen that. Like, he was literally using his wah pedal through the plastic. And I was like, what the fuck? Um, and I asked Steve about it, and it turns out that Zach has these big leather cuffs uh, that you've seen him play with. And those things just collect a shit ton of sweat. And, and when he plays, the sweat just, like, completely drips out over the pedal board. And apparently that's ruined his overdrive pedal before. 
And Steve said he's determined to never let that happen again. And so that's why Steve puts a plastic cover over the pedal board. I spent most of the show throwing with God and Pantera, like just kind of walking around the side stage area or um, sitting on like some road cases and stuff. And a few people saw me, they were like, you looked bored. And um, I was not bored for the record. Uh, it was extremely hot. It was even on stage, like that, it was 110 degrees that day. And I don't even know what the heat index was, but it was crazy. And uh, my lower back just kind of kills me when it's that hot to stand for even a short amount of time. Um, I don't know what it is, but that, that was just what it was when I was fatigued. And so I was sitting on a bunch of bird cases and just wherever I could. I was sitting on like on the ground at one point next to Zach's guitar. I remember just being like chilling and sitting down and then you're like, weird. Um, you know, while they were getting ready for Pantera because there was no other place to sit. Um, and yeah, it was like, I was not bored with the show by any means. It was just, I was just sitting because I was like super fatigued. Before Lay With God went on, I was just kind of hanging out watching Mike DeLeon's band, Flesh Order. Mike DeLeon, of course, of Phil's solo band, The Illegals. About six minutes into their set, Phil walks on the stage, uh, stage left where I'm standing, and I noticed him out of the corner of my eye, and I was like, huh, that's interesting. Well, he knew who I was, and he came up and he hugged me, and he had like, super flattering things to say about the guitar playing and he wanted a picture. We got to chatting for a bit and then he told me something that I will never forget. He told me that I was on the list of potential Pantera guitar player and I, I just could not believe it and I asked him several times. I was like, are you joking? Like, are you serious? And he was like, I'm 100% serious and no bullshit. We actually considered you. After that interaction, I went up to Creedy and Steve and I was like, is he just like bullshitting with me? Like, is, is, is he, did they just tell everybody that? And they were like, he's not known to bullshit people in private like that. Coming from Phil, who, I mean, is spearheading the new Pantera thing. I mean, it, obviously it means a lot to me that he said that. I, I was glad I got to watch from side stage because I was just, it was nice to admire just how big of a production it was and from what little I could see. Because, you know, they had the huge Pantera sign and I could just like really feel the heat from the flames coming off of that fucking thing. And, you know, just all the, all the people who were there, like Cat Brooks is there, Randy Blythe was jamming out to Domination next to me. It was, it was weird. Like all these, all these like famous people that were backstage that I just didn't get to properly introduce myself to. Um, that that's kind of a weird moment when you're like standing next to someone who you're like i kind of want to talk to them but pantera is playing right now and it's really loud and i would be shouting in their ear to try to introduce myself so it's like it was one of those weird moments where i'm just like i'm just kind of hanging out and there's like people who probably don't know who i am but i know who they are next to me and that's just fine that's all right <laughs> it was a weird moment <laughs> And for those asking, I did not get a chance to introduce myself to Zach. I was really just in stay the fuck out of the way mode, like, the entire time. And, uh, you know, obviously I was invited there, but they had a show to do. I'm also not one of those people who, like, runs up to rock stars or famous people and I'm like, oh my god, can I, can I get a picture with you? Kind of thing. Because, I don't know, like, just for the sake of being like, oh my god, I hung out with Zach, you know? Uh... I was just out of his way the entire night and I wasn't trying to get in anyone's way. And ditto with Rex. Like, I saw him side stage, but I didn't get a chance to make an introduction. I did get a chance to watch Zach do his action figure thing, which was pretty adorable. Yeah. 